I, for one, am thrilled we're getting a new Thanksgiving slasher movie in theaters. Because for as long as I can remember, there is a serious lack of Thanksgiving horror films. Sure, there's sorta ones like Home Sweet Home or Blood Rage that kinda mention the holiday. There's Blood Freak, but I already did that when I was sitting on the floor. I've come up in the world now. I have a son, and I'm reviewing movies on a futon in the guest room. I suppose Thanksgiving has been the ultimate one so far? It's a Thanksgiving trilogy so important, it skips the second movie and goes right to the third one. Seriously, there is no part two. And then there's 2002's Amityville Thanksgiving, a movie about an evil marriage counselor who lures people to a couple's retreat to then possess them into killing one another. Cause, you know, Amityville Thanksgiving. Why choose this one over Thanksgiving 3? Well, let's see. Thanksgiving 3 is an hour and 40 minutes. This one is 73 minutes. Amityville Thanksgiving it is. Look, it's got an evil turkey on its cover as well. I'll bet that's totally in the movie. It's not in the movie. Hell, even the tagline, Get stuffed, mother clucker, sounds like a line from Thanksgiving. Again, I bet that line of dialogue is totally in the movie, every bit as much as Amityville or Thanksgiving. The filmmakers seem to be experts on the series. It's directed by Will Colazzo Jr. and co-written by Julianne Prescott. They've worked on such Amityville classics as, no, no, not Amityville 2 or 3, but Amityville Karen, Amityville Apocalypse, Amityville Shark House, and Dracula in the Hood. That's not an Amityville movie. I just like the title. Speaking of titles, I sense good things. That looks a little like the Dimension Films logo, so this will be just as good as Halloween Resurrection. Luckily, they put Amityville in the name, and see? Here's some, <laughs> I don't know, vacation footage from Amityville? It looks like someone shooting establishing shots or B-roll for an episode of Gilmore Girls. Sometimes it looks like the It's Always Sunny music should be playing. And despite the implication in these credits, I have a hunch this is not shot on film. And there you go, people! The Amityville House from across the street! It's in the movie! I'm sure the owners are thrilled! Since it feels like a clickbait title of a movie, make it seem like you just typed in the name of the movie at the last minute. We'll need to get this to 73 minutes come hell or high water. Take your time on the establishing shots, and having one continuous take will make it easier, too! Hi. My name is Frank. I'm a couples therapist. How am I supposed to put my marriage in the hands of someone who won't stop looking at the script? This is Dr. Frank, played by Mark C. Fullhart. He's taking on new clients, like Jackie, played by Natalie Perry, who has the single best IMDb biography I've ever seen in my life, and has the best piece of trivia written about the movie, too. What's not to trust about Dr. Frank here? I want that feeling. I want to feel like a woman again. Smooth. Wait till the fish behind him starts singing Take Me to the River. That'll really set the mood. He's recording this session in a two-camera setup, so he can edit it into a movie later. This doesn't feel like I'm watching a movie. It looks like I'm watching a sleazy producer audition people for a sex comedy in 1982. But we do get the best character in the film, Danny, played by Paul Fagioni. He looks like he's going to see Dr. Frank because Dr. Melfi turned him down. She wants to be taken. She, she wants, wants to, to be, be taken. Okay, she wants to be taken. Well, you know what? If the woman would shut up and stop nagging me. Only good advice will come from this therapy session. All right, you both have needs. Her need is for you to grab her by the ass, slap her down into bed and do her. Excellent. I'm watching a mockbuster of that Twin Flames documentary. Nothing pads out a movie like following something up with a character looking at the camera and describing to you the scene you just saw. Now let's have them all come together so they can go over even more things we just saw. Maybe I will start acting like a man in the bedroom and, and, and my, my, uh, my juices will be, you know, won't have a problem getting my juices flowing for you. 
It's like I'm watching Bat Pussy if it were about the vulgar couple going to counseling. And if there was actual wood in it. Pick up that piece of wood, Danny. Pick up the wood. Pick up the wood. What am I going to pick up the wood for? Pick up the wood, Danny. All right, I got the wood. Let's say that's your relationship. Let's see where this goes. This could be your relationship. What the fuck is he talking about? A lot of whittling. The only thing I'm learning is that Amityville really needs a proper sex shop. The gist is that they're out at a cabin, which Frank is leaving to them for the weekend so they can spice up their sex life. Time will go by quicker if you add a day for night shot and also slowly turn up the lighting so it looks like the sun is coming up. The more he talks, the more I think he really needs to be visited by a proper doctor in town. Enter Dr. Richards, and I mean quite the entrance. Witness this editing. Baron Richards. I have a practice in town. Come in. So, uh, what kind of practice do you have, Mr. Richards? I'm able to be in multiple places with my amazing teleportation powers. He's looking for some former clients that went missing last Thanksgiving. Sweet, they mentioned Thanksgiving. I can't yell at the title now, though I admire the risk the movie takes by putting a clock in the shot. I'm surprised it doesn't jump ahead several minutes between cuts. I don't know, I think a lot of this movie may be improvised. Say what you want, just mention Amityville. God knows what's going on in this place. Come on, Danny. We're out in the middle of nowhere. Amityville, I never even heard of this place. Right, we're completely secluded, surrounded by houses. Let's take a break. They'll be arguing for a while. Microfilm has to be into Berlin in 24 hours. Oh, excuse hours. me. Here you are. Happy Thanksgiving. From all, From all of us, us at Scarecrow and Mrs. King, King. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We're back, people. And yes, they're still arguing. Stop Look at it. Up, Look at this. Look at this. It's... it's I, I can't even that? see back there. I, 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 me, as a man, I'm afraid to walk back there. Look at this, look. Let them go on for a couple of hours. It'll show them find something eventually. Oh, look at this. Oh, my look God. Look at this. No, 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 no are you not bringing this in I haven't house? played this game no. in years. I always thought The Exorcist would be better if it was home movies from Polly Walnuts. Dr. Richards is here to warn them. He searched every backyard in the neighborhood to find them. Sure, he tries telling them to leave while they still can, but after more arguing and rambling, I think he feels it best to just let fate sort it out. They have a previous session to watch. By that, I mean director cameos. Costumes work. We climax together at the same time. Thank you for that. Totally into the doctor's sex advice. Hell, at one point, she leaves to go upstairs, and he just pulls the laptop back out to watch porn. Turn that off. It's Thanksgiving, remember? <laughs> sort of. What is this? I don't know. It looks like a turkey outfit. And that's the story behind the first ever Wood Rocket porno. The real spookiness begins when Danny starts hearing strange things in the night. Hi. Who are you? Is Frank here? Ooh, this is way sexier than the usual red eyes out the window. That'll give them something to talk about in the next session. Oh, now I should form a patient. I <clears throat> let her come here from time to time to use the kitchen. Seems legit, I believe you. At least when he does get possessed by ghosts, they get right to the point. Take the shotgun. Kill your wife. But first, you must fornicate with her. Mm. Whatever gets you in the mood. See, he really is improving their sex life. That's a face that says, if I concentrate hard enough, I can go two whole minutes uninterrupted. It's so good, he doesn't even remember afterwards. We had sex. Ooh. It was the best sex ever. Well, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard in an Amityville film. Even when he goes to get the shotgun. Phew, thank God that gun was plastic. Hurry, get help by speaking into the Kindle. I'm sure Dr. Frank has dealt with this kind of thing many times. He has all the right moves. Get the husband to go to a hotel, and then they can be alone. Even physical support if necessary. No, 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 no. I'm still married. No, 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 no. Don't worry. If you're hiding your eyes in terror, he'll sum it up again in the next scene. Uh, Danny came back with a shotgun. I kicked him out of there. 
sent him to a motel. Sir, we've asked you nicely not to do these recordings in the picnic area. If you think it's gonna get scary, <laughs> psych, she's just gonna watch some more videos. <sighs> this is gonna go on for half the movie, isn't it? Kidding, only five minutes! Five extremely long minutes, where now this couple talks about making duck faces to the camera, being on their phone too long, shaving body hair, bad tasting flavored lubes, and most importantly, dressing like Santa Claus. I, you, know, you know I love when you put my hand on your tummy, I rub it like Santa Claus. Well, ho, 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 doesn't know. Ho, 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 St. Nick's ghost. Yeah, you know. Amityville Thanksgiving. It's okay. Eventually, a ghost pops up on screen. <laughs> My god, what did the flavored lube do to him? After a while, it's like the doctor has his camera set up so he can review the movie. And what was with that gay couple? I don't know. You tell me why that went on for five minutes and had nothing to do with anything. So instead of showing us one of them killing the other and then stuffing him and eating him for Thanksgiving, the doctor just describes it to us. That's much more riveting. Hell, I think it gives up being the Amityville horror and becomes a shining knockoff. Like when she walks in on, I don't know, two of the ghosts banging in turkey costumes? No more to see here. Just have Frank continue explaining the rest of the scene and why there's turkey costumes. He then describes bludgeoning someone to death and eating them for Thanksgiving dinner. I'm sensing the movie has a really small budget. He could still be a real doctor, though. With this editing, he also has the power of teleportation. I'm seeing things, I'm hearing things, I need you to come back. Please, just, just come back. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry uh, that I re Come here, sweetie, come here. Oops, how did my dick come out of my pants? It just appeared like that. And I think I know where all the budget went. <sighs> I did not add that, and in defense of the movie, if I did add that, it probably would look worse. Plus, there probably is video of me looking at the camera and talking about Demon Seed. And then, you know, it was all over, you know, I, I was relieved to be able to know that I put my Demon Seed inside of her. I just asked you for directions to the gas station! When he's done describing death scenes, now he's describing sex scenes, like I'm watching Grandpa read erotic fan fiction that he wrote. But Frank describing scenes makes more sense than when you actually do see something happen. Still hotter than the red eyes out the window. Wow, Baby's first A24 movie escalated quickly. Here's the nail-biting scene of people waiting for their Uber to take them to the company Halloween party. Now the doctor cuts to the chase. He tells her she's impregnated with his demon spawn so that he will now be immortal. Okay, he doesn't look like a demon. He looks like he thought Elmer Fudd's shotgun was a pair of binoculars. You know we're in the climax when it goes extra hard with the stock footage. Here, use all the hell shots from Journey to Hell. And even with this, they still pause it to then cut to Frank explaining more scenes. Though it actually shows a death this time, Dr. Richards will stop the evil of Dr. Frank once and for all. But not before Dr. Frank again describes a death scene we couldn't show. And just get to whatever awful effect is under that cover. I always save the best for last. Mike. Again, I did not add that, but I can alter it to make it look just like me. What did you do to my head? Given the next effect, I wish there were more violent scenes. <laughs> Perfection. This is the end of the story, by the way. Jackie and Danny are dead. The doctor has gotten away with it. But don't fret, there's still 21 minutes of the movie left. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a break. 
so you can brace yourselves for how they prolong it. Season of Thanksgiving, and what better time of year than to promote myself? Yes, Thanksgiving also means Black Friday, so now you can get my book, Class of 86, at a much lower price. Amityville Thanksgiving may be a little questionable with its title, but Class of 86 does indeed have a Class of 86, and there is a van and an apocalypse. Click on the links in the comments and in the description, or head over to Amazon to pick up the ebook, paperback, or hardcover today. We're back, people, but really, we don't need to be. There is no reason for this movie to be continuing. Want to know how they pad out the remaining 21 minutes? By having news footage come in, where the reporter didn't even bother putting on a suit, and whose teleprompter is on the floor, I guess, describes to us how Dr. Frank is a prime suspect as he tirelessly reads through eyewitness testimony about how untrustworthy Dr. Frank is. Add in several awkward pauses, too. That'll make it longer. Is just reading what the witnesses say not enough for you? Here's this guy talking about taking his wife to Dr. Frank for marriage counseling before she went missing. So, that should be the end of the movie, right? This is one of several people who claim that this doctor is responsible. <sighs> We're gonna see even more people talking, aren't we? I mean, sure, but there's still more Frank video where he talks about how Jackie messed up his bathroom. Useless husband of hers, Danny, that outlived his usefulness the first night. I'm shocked they actually put a cutaway there. This is a movie that doesn't just show us Frank doing a video for the reporter, but it shows the reporter opening the package that the tape is in. I don't know, I guess something happened to him. We now have the public access show of footage chroma keyed over the green part of a picture of an old TV, who then talks about an undercover operation that were not shown, followed by footage of the private investigator who tells us that, yes, indeed, Frank is guilty, and he is the killer. And he found Dr. Richard's body. Think it's over now? Nope. This guy's sister is missing. Then he tells us about her bad marriage. I like that the scene is so long that when the progress bar gets to the end, the bar just goes away. Three minutes later, it finally ends. My God. This is through and through a clickbait film. It's not a movie that is made to be watched or enjoyed. It's a movie that simply makes you click on it because of the funny title and then give up five minutes in. That's it. But hey, that's good enough for it to get a sequel, Amityville Turkey Day, which according to the trailer will have a turkey in it, so I guess that's a plus. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. What am I thankful for? Well, new releases over on Vudu really are a gold mine. If you're looking for more clickbait titles, we'll see what we can find for next week. Mm -hmm.